like queer coded with, or with, autistic coded? Oh, oops, oops. Auti- oh, ha, ha, ha. Um, is Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter? I think I'd have to watch it again, but we could do that. Okay. Hi everybody, it's Noah. I'm back here for another episode of Not Autistic Enough. My guest today is my partner. Tess. Hi. They are visiting me right now from Waterloo, Kitchener Waterloo. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Tess recently got their autism diagnosis. Yeah, as of like five days ago, so it's freshly diagnosed. It's so we are gonna be covering masking. What is masking, specifically autistic masking? So autistic masking is uh, conscious or to a degree unconscious strategies for appearing neurotypical, so non-autistic. That's usually modulating your facial features, uh, your expression, Um, it can involve more eye contact, um, the way you move, uh, topics that you discuss with people, preparing for events beforehand. If you stim, it would be like to prevent yourself from stimming or being like, okay, what facial expression do I make now? Okay, Mm. oh, okay, I should be sad, all right. Um, Or I should, oh, this is a funny situation, I'll laugh. Yeah. Um, And uh, sort of trying to take environmental cues and being like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, it would be helpful if there was like a laugh track for real life. Yeah. It would be so helpful. I know. Because usually if I think someone's joking, I'll laugh. And then if it turns out they're not joking, I'm just like, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm screwed. Yeah, I'm always so good at telling when things are funny in Friends, you know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I feel like I learned a lot from Friends, actually. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You might, you might genuinely feel happy or sad or all mm-hmm. these things while you are in these situations. They are not necessarily faked, but you might exaggerate them or you might sh- show them in like a more neurotypical way. Yeah. I don't like this term yeah, in general, I don't like it either. but I'm going to say it anyways. I have what people call resting bitch face. Oh. My affect is fairly like flat and mm-hmm. it's not because I'm not interested. It's just like to, like, I'm f- I feel things quite strongly, but to emote on my face mm. is, like, generally, it's very tiring. And I used to work at a restaurant, customer service. It was so exotic. Like, I would get home and just feel like my soul had been, like, and it's not like customer service isn't already soul-sucking as yeah. it is, but it was just extra. Yeah. I think particularly for autistic people, um, service work can be like a particular kind of hell. Yeah, I got into a rhythm when I was doing service work of I had a lot of scripts and scripts are kind of practiced responses um, and expected answers to help you work out how to do a conversation. So I had like hundreds of scripts for my service work. Hundreds? Hundreds. I have like 10 go-to scripts. Yeah. So something we're going to do is we have each come up with a couple questions that we are going to, so we don't know each other's questions, but questions that we think you might be interested in hearing, and we are going to have genuine reactions slash explanations on the spot for these questions. Authentic. So do you think, uh, or has masking for you been a conscious or unconscious strategy um, either growing up or now, and do you use it? Because some people don't. Um, I think growing up, Oh, I did it just I was in free fall. So no, I didn't. And then I sort of learned and then I was like, oh, this is good. I can like I can I can mask really well. I can appear like most people. Mm-hmm. Like people can't tell I'm autistic. Don't anyways. Um and then I sort of found like a community and friend group that didn't require masking. Um and then I just was like, well, 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 well that's not I'm not going to do that and then it just went back down. And the physical masking was unconscious. Mm-hmm. It was like eye contact, body language. That was sort of just something that I just copied from other people. And I think some of my facial expressions too, they were just copied, but what I was saying, like consciously like rehearsed like scripts or yeah that was conscious Mm -hmm. that was conscious and i don't i don't do those things anymore now i have my question oh okay doesn't everybody mask autistic or not like doesn't everybody i was thinking about this this morning because i was trying to differentiate between um how there is a lot of pressure for everyone to conform but i think that particularly um like there is uh, an onus 
on autistic people to not appear autistic. Certain stims, like hand flapping um, and lack of eye contact, those are things that are associated with autism. And so those are things that autistic people will often try to mask because they don't want to be recognized because of the negativity around that. And I think those are things that neurotypical people don't really have to think about. I do think that everyone feels some pressure um, to um, you know, fit in, but the I think the pressure is just that much more intense because of negative attitudes towards disability or neurodivergence. And my friend got me like a whole bunch of travel cups, like paper cups with um, dome lids because that is the only um, cup that I like to drink my hot liquids out of. With the dome lid? With the dome lid specifically. Why the dome lid? It just feels right. All right. Yeah. So, My question? yes, your question. Okay. Um, ooh, how does masking affect you? For me specifically, right after, I'd almost get a little bit of a high, mm -hmm. um, sort of like you're running, right? And then, like, you don't crash immediately after running. You're, well, I mean, <laughs> depends. <laughs> I don't know. It depends how fit you are. Like, yeah. dang. I'd get home, and it, for me, the effects would officially sink in as soon as I was alone. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I'd get home, I feel it very tan like tangibly, like falling off of me. I mean, like, oh. I think that's quite common because the adrenaline wears off because uh, there is actually like an adrenaline response to. It, it feels masking, like it. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time, it feels like. Oh, this is a game. Am I doing well? <laughs> Am I winning? I never won. I was never good at it. I, I So earlier I said I did try. Just because I tried does not mean I was successful. Yeah. I was very unsuccessful. And I think sometimes there's the, the discrepancy between noticing that someone's trying um, and the fact that it's not working. That can even be kind of um, more off-putting for neurotypical people interacting with you because they're like, what, what do you what, what, like what you're, you you're not just weird you're weird and you're trying to fit in and i don't know how to read that so. <laughs> what are you doing just yeah. be weird just, just keep <laughs> it at it. keep it at one level yeah so was there a physical effect and a psychological effect for you yes so uh so it's specifically not a uh, an after effect but a before effect mm -hmm. so if i knew i was going to be in a social situation with people that i wasn't comfortable with like just be like okay I've got to save as much energy as mm. I can. So a lot of the times to like maximize the amount of energy I have before a social situation, I will nap. Physically, like I, t I tend to crash after um, social events. I would suddenly feel extremely anxious and depressed. I find it a lot harder to speak. Um, I find it much harder to emote, to notice humor. Um, I suddenly lose, uh, or apparently lose, the social skills that I was employing so intensely during that uh, social situation. This person is so awkward! Like, God, they're just so awkward and so- Hi everyone! Uh, Hi! So, thanks for watching the video thus far, and uh, we never got to finish it because the audio cut out, so I'm really sorry. Sorry, but yeah, so we missed a question and we uh, kept on moving. So sorry about that. But hopefully you found this video helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.